Okay, that's it. We may have a breakthrough. A couple crickets. We're going to go with what we can get. Interrupting the current neo-coronial cricketism to bring you behind the woodshed. This is Cricketude Busting Episode BTWRLM390. Maybe this is the good one, 390. I guess we could add six there, it would make it a little bit better. Remember, it's not resisting to say resist. Talk is cheap. Bloviate or take action, folks. I don't know what else to say about that. We really have to step up. This is not, this is wired. The way this place is wired is if you be quiet, the one who moves takes over. So if you have no other thought, get you behind the woodshed and learn you a thing or two. Be the storm behind the woodshed, folks. See that little boat, that little statement went through. I think that's interesting. You be the storm. You be the difference. Each one of us. Let's not look out at what everyone else does. You see the harm. You see the damage going on. And this is not just about the so-called health crisis. This is everything that being usurped in your life. Everything can be addressed in the ways I've been talking to you under the example of this supposed health crisis. You be the storm. It's up to you. Each one of us will make that example, and that helps to bring the others along. And as this, this year has rolled out, I've been really somewhat satisfied, not with the action, but with the suggestions as I look into how we would resolve all these things without going to lavish, deep, abyss type of responses. We still have in us the ability to do so, and I think we should do it because it would just speak to us very well that we took, if you will, the higher ground. And we did what the people that came before us that had seen the world, it always blows me away how young they were, to see the world the way they did without all the connections that we have today. How much clearer they saw the world and how they knew what they had to do, and they tried to set up a place that would eliminate a lot of the potentials and we hear about checks and balances that those are in our in our grasp that we just don't reach those are in our ability to cognize which we don't think and we don't do and that's right there a pretty aware group of guys early on and uh, we are far from that that i'm always in a way amazed about how much i little i know but how much i've come to know on how we address this and so the reason why i cut the crickets off just a little bit short is because uh, I have it on good authority that an important case challenging a governor's and a local health official's orders that uh, didn't fulfill the legislature's duty at all in the delegated authority that was issued by the legislature. The executive didn't follow the, the legislature's duty. We have a certainly there a separation of powers question in the minimum. But, uh, to issue any of these pandemic health orders has just been filed in Tennessee. And so pending uh, service of summons and complaint, we'll need to keep an eye on this case as it comes out, which may surpass the importance of the Ohio case, given this new case is filed in an equity jurisdiction upon a facial statutory constitutional failure of officials and not is not intending to seek discovery at law. And I find this to be a very critical distinction of why the Ohio case is good, because it challenges whether or not the local officials could find an infectious agent, which allowed them to start to do their powers, which is still questionable on how they would have exercised it. But this doesn't seek to get in. This doesn't seek to get discovery on how they did it wrong. This this case will come forward and say you did it wrong. You don't have the power. Period. From before it got started. And so we'll keep an eye on that. Don't have much more to say on this because. We need to see how this is going to roll out. But keep your ears out. Hopefully this will come out and we'll be able to discuss it a little bit longer. And uh, again, you don't take any lip from the official miscreants. You be the storm behind the woodshed. You step up and you stop. You figure out what the problem is and you stop it. And I can't tell you how easy it is to see where the problems are. But if you just took interest and responsibility in anything that irked you within an official capacity, the things I've been talking to you relative to this COVID nonsense it is relevant to every other ill that the government puts on us. And at that point, we're back to, well, then why are, what's our complaint? And a few of us have been there here doing this for a long time. We've had to learn 
the the injustice of the system and that is possible to check too but you have to more listen to what i'm saying the subtlety and difference of what i say we do today than what we may have known before and there's different more pointed things we can do to lay the foundation as we move as someone has really messed this place up really bad and we were we allowed it at every turn we talk a lot but we don't really work through where the remedy might be and to find out that we've been overtaken where the remedy ought to be and so like i said this case in tennessee i haven't got it for you has been filed it's waiting for service and we're going to see how this turns out where we have at the same time and i told you folks you're going to be on the right side of history if you start moving down this thing and i told you this around march or april with the response of the remedies i was telling you already not just conferring on whether or not this is a problem but that this was a problem and that here's what you do to start to work it out. And for so I started out at the Ritz and then I moved down to just writing a letter. And the reason why you wrote the letter was to get you back into form, uh, to get the evidence that there's no evidence that the officials have that they can substantiate their position. You don't need any more than that. This is not a protest around that. And this is uh, going to be, a, hopefully we'll see how this works out. You write a letter, you don't get a response. You don't worry about that they don't listen. The fact that they don't listen is their, is what you use. I said this is a whole, what I do is a whole, di what I suggest and offer is a whole different approach. You go ahead and take those statutes as they are, where there's due process, where they're reflecting something in the Constitution that protects a fundamental right. You go ahead and use that. You don't challenge it. And then you just point out the official has failed. And where you point out the duty and they failed it, the burden's not on you to prove it. You don't have to talk with them any further. You then go seek a remedy. And I offered that the habeas corpus would be there, be able to be done. And sure enough, that's held out really well. Now, people went all over the place and did other things. But the habeas still sits there on a private level. If you're a subject and you have the standing to say that those orders have, kept, uh, restra un with, have unwarrantedly restrained your liberty. And I would expend that liberty out pretty far because your rights underneath, if you needed a, you needed a reference, that the federal constitution has a, a lot of cool rights in the first article of the Bill of Rights. That's, there's like five or six in there that you can do, and then you have the, the hidden ones. As I was pointing out to someone, not only do you have the right of a free association, you have the right from association. And where that's an official, where they come under color, that's a felony. You have the right to be free from that. You have the right to have them be honor the law to, to do that and keep the peace by them through that and not interfere with you in your lawful pursuits. And so there's a big deal here that we could step up to and stop uh, complaining about us being violated and being taken and just, just keep taking it. It's up to us to protect our own property, essentially. And so uh, here it comes out. Now, I told you, over time it would come. And here we see now the first breaking of the ice someone did it and a lot of people will say good let them do it i don't have to now uh, i'm going to say this is a hidden uh, this is not necessarily the victory it looks like however we do have evidence that the when you place the even a wrong question before the court it'll come back correctly uh, when you focus on what the real harm was and the breaking news is for michigan folks over there the Michigan Supreme Court governor exceeded powers during coronavirus pandemic. And what's very interesting is how this came, case came through back to the state, which I'll read, a, really, just I'll read the conclusion. I'm going to point out some problems with it. It's why you can't put your pen away for the habeas corpus. It's what they're still allowing to the state to do. But what's interesting is that, the, as I'll read this article, the Michigan Supreme Court has ruled that the governor, Gretchen Whitmer, has exceeded her power during the coronavirus pandemic. That question, that, uh, excuse me, that first paragraph, the end of it, should tell you what the main problem of this is. However, let's keep reading. It's still, her power was still struck down. The Michigan Supreme Court had struck down months of, months of orders by Gretchen, Governor Gretchen Whitmer that were aimed at preventing the spread of coronavirus. The court says, think about this, folks, the coronavirus is not novel. So understand what the news is, is, they convolute these terms so terribly, no one really understands what the point's supposed to be, given this so-called pandemic. It was supposed to be on something novel. The article doesn't even reference that. And I can't help but interject, and maybe it's interference when I read this stuff, because I'm not really much of a reader. 
but there's a really important points that we could read through the news and just miss, miss, go right, blow right past that have been the problem the entire time that are continually promoted today. This is not preventing the spread of coronavirus. It's supposed to be spreading a novel infectious agent they found in their state. And I've been saying since I don't know when. I haven't gone back. I don't go back to my stuff, my, my art broadcast, somewhere when it was certain that there was no test. We found that out. There was no way for them to find. That predicted the past was no good. That they were not going to be able to come up with enough authority to delegate through the legislature's enactments the power to do the police power that they had you all locked down and you agreed to. And so that's why I went to habeas corpus. And particularly, I remember now in Tennessee, I read, in Tennessee, the rules actually recognize that habeas corpus, and I read that here month, just a few weeks ago. And so this is not this is not something unknown to uh, the law, or the legal even, uh, and this is something that we are supposed to protect in our, for ourselves and have tools for ourselves within the system. Why the courts keep, however corrupt the courts might be, However, they don't look at certain things. They're telling you, if you bring the remedies, we are at least openly claiming that we'll look at them. Now, that doesn't mean you don't because they said that. It means that you do, and you either prove that they won't or that they will because you pressed them in the, quite the right way. But what's interesting here, it's not that they did it based on the emergency order so-called directly. And in, I didn't go research Michigan, and a couple of you were thinking to do your habeases. I'm suggesting you continue on that and speed that up and qualify yourself with a habeas, write it down, have it in practice, so that you, because this, you're going to have to have it sitting in your desk relative to at least the form, because if they come back, because of what they did in this case, they come back in the future with another provision, you're going to still, they're still going to want to press the federal imposition. And that's going to be more of a promotion and you may need to have those documents that I've been telling you to make to protect yourself against all that. It's not an argument. It's a factual presentation. And in the equity case, a fact is what you put in, and the, the judge is supposed to put the law up applicable to the fact. It's not a convolution. You don't go to a jury. That's the other problem with the Ohio case. Discovery and then a jury trial. I've told you all about the problems here. Equity gets us directly where you have a right that's being infringed, and there's no remedy at law. You go right with equity. And there's numbers of remedies for that. But let me get on back to this so discussion. The court says Whitmer illegally drew authority from a 1945 law that does not, doesn't apply. Okay, think about this. First of all, it doesn't apply. They go on to say something even more extraordinary here in, it's in this article or the next. The court determined that the law was an unlawful delegation of legislative power to the executive branch branch in violation of the Michigan Constitution. The decision is an extraordinary development in the months-long tug-of-war between Whitmer, a Democrat, and Republicans who control the legislature. So I'm going to stop there and go to the next article, but that's the wrong position. This is articles making it political. It's had to do with the law. And we now see that the legislature can do things wrong. I want to point out something. Did you catch the problem? This is one of the main remaining problems, one of the main things that goes on in this country. That a 1945 law that was unlawful could still be on the books in 2020 in order for a governor to wrongly use it is really a travesty of justice. And I want you to see this because this is not even the problem I, I originally I see in the case. This is just what goes on that allows these bureau rats, these executives turned bureau rat, to take control of your life. It's the very same thing that lingers in the law that shouldn't be there, that these new guys coming in from external places are utilizing to subvert. The more I see this, the more I've realized there's people uh, foreign to us that look at our laws to figure out ways to interfere with it. And you're not there to stop it. And we have the power to do that. And so part of the problem I have is you can, everyone can keep complaining, but if you complain too long, it's just a, the self-inflicted wound I keep telling you about. Let me move on to the other story and that says this even more extraordinarily about that 1945 law. That uh, the Michigan Supreme Court Friday struck down months old orders, orders, folks, a whole bunch of them, not just as one, or Governor Gretchen Whitmer, that were aimed at preventing the spread of coronavirus, 
saying that she drew authority from a 1945 law that is unconstitutional. So they clearly say that this 1945 law is unconstitutional. What's it still doing in the law? What's it still being lawful, pretending to be lawful, is the problem. Is the thing that's been allowed in the system that no people, none of you people, anywhere, and this is all over the states, they're everywhere, have ever stepped up to challenge. And it's partly why you don't have, that you claim that there's no rights and no remedies and no justice. And there's another covering there with the Bar Association. Don't ever let yourself drop your guard on that problem. And until I, I see a major shift in what that Bar Association does, a professions union that came in and uh, took care of, took, at least I can find in 26 states, threw down, just got rid of your the de jure people's law and instituted the substitute, supplanted it. The word supplanted is in one state. It's, that's an international term of overthrow. You don't really even know that. I talk about it. I've mentioned it over years. And people don't understand this is what they're under. Many different types of, I will say, occupations. But here we have a 1945 law that in 2020 is finally declared unconstitutional is one of our main problems. This is an interesting problem because this is the legislature's problem. What I was saying that the case in Tennessee will do is it says that the legislature did okay to make a due process that the local health authority has to determine in the infectious agent. So understand the subtlety in the distinction here as well. And this will lead to a potential problem in the future, which is not before us in that kind of a condition, where then if it's said that the legislature could allow an imposition on your fundamental rights, then you challenge that then, that they couldn't, and you get to this answer. But this answer doesn't come directly either. And these stories go on and talk about, about this condition relative to what people were doing. I thought I could, I'll go down and talk about it. Coincidentally, the court's opinion emerged on the same day that Wittenberg's critics submitted more than 539,000 signatures in a bid to repeal the 1945 law. Now, you see, if they just would have went in equity, they could have blown this out real quickly. But they didn't even do that. This case really is interesting in how it comes to this the state court. And I say back because what happened was is it went from the federal court. I told you you shouldn't go because the federal court really has no, actually no jurisdiction. And if you go there, they have a different standard that's going to give preference to the relationship between the federal and state by the Constitution and give preference to, and deference to the state law. And they'll presume it's all lawful. It takes the state court to show that it's unlawful unless it infringes on your rights directly, which the state wasn't, the government, uh, the federal courts, except for Philadelphia's judge, which I told you was an anomaly, said. And, but the state, uh, the Philadelphia judge, went through 14th Amendment rights, which is your civil rights, which is what your extortion is. And there's, an, there's that subtle exception that uh, you have the exactions of all every kind unless you can show there was a protection. And so you're obligated. You're, you're in, guilty until you prove yourself innocent in that. But this was the federal court did a 14th Amendment addressment. The state is you have a direct access to your Constitution, and you should be speaking through that. In fact, I don't know of many states that have different provisions, maybe stated differently than the federal does, and there's no need to refer locally to a federal jurisdiction. However, this does come back through, and this was an, uh, in relation, a case in relation, this was in equity, at the federal court, which certi requested a certification of a question from the United States uh, District Court, Western District of Michigan, Southern Division. So this went through the federal, and then they said, no, we need to have the Supreme Court will certify a question. There's a provision for all this. Certify a question to the Supreme Court. There was two questions, I believe, in this case. And they offered the questions, and they said, we need, before we can proceed, we need to have the state Supreme Court decide. And the state Supreme Court decides, as you hear the stories, but you see it's about coronavirus, not about anything novel. No, it's like that's lost. However, let's move on to the problem now. What I consider the problem for all of us as people relative to this power, and we find it in the conclusion, you roll down to about page 552 in the PDF 
a link to the case I found. And I'll just read the paragraph. It's a short paragraph. But it cul culminates for my purposes to tell you the problem. And we'll go on to the dissent just below that. And uh, they, uh, they specifically state the problem relative to what I believe needed to happen. The conclusion reads, this is a point f um, five, a V conclusion. We conclude that the governor lacked the authority to declare a, quote, state of emergency, close quote, or a, quote, state of disaster, close quote, under the EMA after April 30th, 2020, on the basis of the COVID-19 pandemic. Furthermore, we conclude that the EPGA is in violation of the Constitution of our state because it purports to delegate to the executive branch the legislative powers of the state government, including its plenary police powers, to allow the exercise of such power indefinitely. As a consequence, the EPGA cannot continue to provide a basis for the governor to exercise emergency powers. So, did you hear the problems? A couple of problems right there. I hope I hope you picked up on them. Let me. I won't know if I'll read it. I'll just paraphrase what what the dissenting, partially concurring judge said. He agrees in his partial concurrence that the pandemic, COVID nineteen pandemic, is a re was is a real problem. And so when we go back, we listened for this in the first sentence uh, that lacked authority. Uh, after April 30th. In other words, the problem here is the Supreme Court did not look to see whether or not the state actually correctly and truly validated that there was an actual infectious agent to be able to be novel, to be an epidemic. They didn't look at any of that. They accepted what the governor said underneath the authority until April 30th. And then they said by the Constitution and the Emergency Act, it ended at the 30th, is not the proper answer. There should have been no authority prior to April 30th, given that they call it COVID pandemic. And we know there is no test. We know no jurisdiction has certified to an infectious agent. We also know they actually, there no jurisdiction can. They would have had to develop a completely different regime than what there was imposed upon them, and they adopted, I say wrongly, to the exclusion of their local authorities delegated to them. They had no authority to accept there was a COVID-19 pandemic. What are we talking? Are we talking about a test for COVID? No, that's the other problem, because what's supposed to be the infectious agent that the epidemic is about is what's supposed to be te tested. So they didn't even state that correctly. This is that convolution of terms I've been telling you is so important to straighten up. We also say the pandemic is outside the jurisdiction because the statute only says to epidemic. Epidemic situates its itself, itself outside of an outbreak beyond its origins. An epidemic goes to the limits of the border. A pandemic would be many jurisdictions outside the limit would actually be considered more of a pandemic. When you use the... in also confusing the term region, which is also international, regionalization, regionalism too. That's the problem with this as well. But I'll use the word regional so you know it's bigger than just an area. It'd be This starts to bring us back into states that are affected by the, the thing that they find. All right, back to this case. They agree the governor had power prior to, thir to April 30th is our problem. If they agreed underneath that provision that she had power, they'll agree if she finds another provision in this state, it's a woman, that she finds a power. And so nobody argued this, and the federal court did not look at it. They didn't advance that part of the question, whether or not this thing was real in the first place. Or it could be shown, evidence. You're looking for evidence. You're not looking for their statement. You're looking for the evidence that they did it. And there's a progress. If you go to your process, there's a, the states I've seen that there's a maybe five or six step process that has to go on. It's that letter I've asked those of you that don't want to move right into court stuff to stop this, the, the, well, through a habeas, stop it against you 
there's a letter writing process you go to actually get the evidence that's not there to actually foreclose their ability to say this is not a fight as I, I think I said this last night on Twitter this is not a fight they have an obligation they have an obligation to present to you what they found underneath the statute when they don't listen to you they have sealed their fate relative to your ability to walk in and said they had the duty to they won't they don't have the power that they're wielding to keep me underneath a liberty constraint it's unwarranted what they're doing. Now, you don't ask for a jury trial. You don't ask for a discovery because that's they're already admitted that they don't have the evidence. And I'm hearing even more. There's People are asking these questions. I'm not sure people know what to do with their information when they get the answer. There's admissions that no, no, no I can't find anywhere that they did anything. If there's five steps, they didn't even do the first step. There's no evidence of any of this. And so everybody's allowed to be allowed themselves to be locked down. Businesses have been allowed to go down the tubes or have now serious troubles without any warrant, absolutely any warrant in law. Here, get back to Michigan. Big deal, big win, one less. There's one of the 57 states now, remember, one of the 57 states of the United States has now fallen that the governor's orders were no good. Now, I know. I hope I got some people tweaking their brain about what I just said. Think about it. This is administrative. In fact, if I, remember, I don't remember where I read it. They admit this is administrative. This whole condition was administrative, as I told you it was. Now, I can't remember where it was. I forgot to fix on that to go find it for you. But everything's coming out like I've told you, and I hesitate. I'm not here to tell you how much I was right. I'm telling you that what I was telling you was, the, was correct and correct sufficiently and enough and adequately enough for you to extricate yourself. There was no need to comp continue to complain. It, when they, This condition is an obligation of the government. You don't have the burden of proof. Once they fail and there's a duty and you identify it in the black and white, because you can't use your opinion anyway, it's the duty they were subject to, typically through the oath of office or the employment even, the contract of employment, you have them to, they have the burden. You All you have to do is keep sure that, make sure that no one divests them of that. On a habeas, it's a double burden. Not only do they have the burden in the first part, but they have the burden when they come to at, to tell the court why they legitimately have have un, have warranted. What's their warrant for the restraint they have you on? And in that, if you think about how this works, if you know the five steps or so, and it depends on each state. There's some have three, some have about six, some have a list. You go through the rules, but if they don't have the evidence and their burden to produce it, you don't have an argument. All you focus on is that they didn't bring the evidence, it's over. You don't have to argue with them. If they want to throw a bunch of confetti in your eyes and try to make it smoke in the, in the judge's face that they got something they want to talk about otherwise, like the PCR tests and all this and the numbers, and that, you say, that's, that's not before this court. What's before this court is that they were supposed to produce the evidence that they found the infectious agent to give them the power that they're wielding, the claim to restrain me and then threaten me when I don't comply. So I'm kind of going off the idea. I'm wanting people to know this is for them to file, to start make the record, and at least make the example that these people that are in government don't have the power that they wield, and you just become the example of how that gonna, that's going to start to work. The habeas, I told you, is also the cheapest action. Some states it's free. So this is not even, this is like, this should be recreation time. And when you see a case like this where the emergency that was, now here's another analysis. You go to Michigan, you find out what these two laws are, this 1945 law in particular. Find out what it said. Go look and compare that to your state law. A lot of these were model laws that come out of New York through Ohio and then over to the West Coast. A lot of these went right across the country with, again, the Bar Association in its early forms, had these organizations that move these model laws across. That's how this has partly been done. And so you'll find that these laws are consistent across. They just say different things slightly, but the effect is the same. You'd analyze how this was, what it is, and you would actually bring in and say, for you, not only that, but the law that the, let's say the governors are, because the governors did an emergency order and the health authorities did the public health crisis order. That's a bifurcation of authority you have to deal with. But they still have standards. So you can bring the Michigan into your local issue on the habeas now, not by the Michigan case, because you have to compare it to your local state act the same way. 
you look at the reasoning behind it and what provisions were wrong. You can add that now. See, we didn't have that before. All we had was that they were violating the statute for any any health crisis. There was no test. They couldn't get there. They don't have a police power until they show it, and that's actually good enough. Now we have a little more inkling, a little more insight that the court certifying to the federal court, which is a powerful thing here. This was an answer going back to the federal author a federal court, which is a nationwide issue now, reflects can reflect back nationwide. I'm really wondering whether how many knob dominoes start to fall relative to this matter. Okay, so I'm just I'm pausing here. I just want think about what I'm saying about you have you have an ability to step up and protect yourself, and you have the, the duty to yourself, actually, the obligation to yourself, because no one's going to do it, to stop this nonsense, to stop this thing. will stop the vaccines if you're against vaccines. will stop the mistreatment of the elderly if that's what you don't like. will stop the covering of, uh, of comorbidities that people are now dying from. To stop, if you are into stopping the, the suicides, the, you, you have the, the power. You, ha you have the power. You don't have the power sitting and doing nothing. You don't have the power se sending a letter waiting to get an answer that they're not going to answer, and that's your proof. That's all you need is that they didn't answer. That gives you the that opens the door to inv invoke the power that you have to call them on the carpet, so to speak, bring them behind the woodshed, and have them show if they won't do it to you privately, they're going to have to do it to a court, or they lose right there immediately. This is not we don't wait for discovery. And if that's not good enough and you lose the first round, you get to come back at them because this thing is a layered problem against us. And as long as you're in the black and white, they can never take you out. And if they do, then you have, if you position it right, then you got the Bar Association doing that. And so that's all dependent on how much you want to bring forward. Remember I told you the House Resolution documents and where this all comes from? We get it back into the CDC. We get to One Health. One Health supports the, the WHO. We got the WHO and the CDC giving an undue influence to the state, we got the international connection. And so we have undue influence coming back in to, to disregard your local protections. Should not be something you should turn away from or let happen. And so, moving over. Big issue, big deal in Michigan. No more. Not only was it unconstitutional, the law itself was un the, what her authority that she invoked was unconstitutional. The law that she referred to was unconstitutional. From 1945, folks, how long cancers can sit in your system? And we wonder why we have no rights. It's because of this stuff. Now, interestingly, subsequent to the filing of that case in Tennessee, uh, and subsequent to all my broadcasts as well, I was provided a link to a website. It's ultimate proof COVID-19 was a plan to usher in the New World Order. Now, I don't get real sensational about this, quote, New World Order. What you have to do is get past the sensational. You have to find the evidence, and you bring it together, and you show that there's a, if you will, now, now the new standard from the Supreme Court is the plausible complaint. You bring the plausible, plausible evidence that makes the connections to something that's foreign to what your expectation is in the states or by your state constitution was somewhat listed in this document that was provided to me. And I wanted to give you this link because it goes through a, a, quite a bit of things, and uh, some of which uh, were uh, spoken to in the Tennessee case. Uh, some of them were not, but the most important ones are, are here. I wanted to roll down through this, and uh, we see, remember I talked about that it was brought out, and I can't remember the origination of this. It was somebody on maybe a Reddit or somebody. I, can, I apologize. That, that's a critical find that they did. They put on Reddit. I normally don't do Reddit, but as you get connected, after we connect up, we get to find the information. It's But what are you going to do with it? Well, I looked at the Reddit information regarding the what. The test kits sold for COVID-19 in 2017. That came to to uh, to me. We did a quick check. I think Gary L was there. He comes in and tells me to just, you know this is what what they're finding. I went out and I because Gary L was saying that they were 
remember I told you they were they were changing the website. I immediately went out to check a co corroborating website. I found I think it was the tariffs website that we talked about all this. That says that there were the tariff. This is money now. This is the why it's important. That there were a, a, a number for this kits that was in the world economy. All through the World Bank and through the world economy. Okay, so that this link about the or this discussion is even in this do document. I got the feeling I wondered how much these people listened behind the woodshed. On the other hand, if there was none, it's very nice that there's lots of people that can put this stuff together. And then I just observe why don't why doesn't anybody just take maybe this website, go prove out every step, go get every piece of evidence, and make a case for yourself. You start out with the short statement, what I call the kernel, and when it comes to the court, you then explode it on them. Then you don't. You show this is not just conspiracy. These are not just ideas. All these things are here are playing. None of which we can understand. Maybe the one, but that was all going to be stopped. That would be a, that would all not matter had the local officials followed the law. Wow! You just have another proof. Had they followed the law, none of this would matter. But we don't know now. Any of this could matter. How is it that they're talking about COVID-19 prior to 2020, 19, late 19, uh, 2019? Could they be talking about a different one? you got to be careful about that. That very well could be, but you bring in how that wouldn't matter. So I, I did a research. I found out collaterally there was a tariffs actually on these kits. That's in this document. But I want to roll down and, and, and roll down through, and there's another one that popped up that I don't, I don't, I didn't have this one. That just popped up, and I think it's called eScapeNet, and it's a another patent. And you've got to be very careful on the origins of the patents and whether or not they're actually discussing the thing you're talking about. The point is, I just don't look at this and say, "Oh, here's a." In this in this case, the eScapeNet patent search site shows a COVID-19 related test that was issued to a Richard Rothschild, and it says in brackets GB, that I found through this ultimate, this, this ultimate humans are free document. In 2015, it said, a testing method was patented for COVID-19 with the name Richard Rothschild. And we can go flip out on Rothschild. It may be there. It may be connected to the foundation or not. That would have to be proven. That really didn't matter to me as much as there's one, does this database have more? And just so happened, if you go into that database, I tracked it down, didn't know anything about this. If you go into that web, that uh, eSpaceNet uh, from the Netherlands, and remember, I, I make a connection to the Netherlands. It was the, remember in the Constitution, it was one that didn't get paid to its debts, that never got paid. It's one of them that sits there as this interesting little connection for a uh, seemingly forever. Here we have again, this Netherland-based website that you have to find the one for the English language. I couldn't find that for a while. And you do the research to find and do a search on the English translated one, not the new one, not the new website, that you look for, just search COVID-19. Finally, you'll come up with Rothschild Richard A. as a list, but the citations of prior authority are not within the testing regime. They actually they actually confuse me a bit. They're for audiovisual type patents. I had to do a continue. I had to check quite a bit until I finally got a listing uh, by searching COVID-19 all by itself. In the first page, you find this patent, and it talks about that it was exactly what it says. The priority date was 2015. You want to know how's that happened? Well, if you look, go through and click through, you find out it relates to a 2020 patent. As I understand patent law and patent filings, the priority date is the patent filing date, and that's the priority for your patent relative to anybody else. So this thing was filed as a priority with a priority date in 2015. I wasn't satisfied that. What other COVID patents are there? Well, there's pages of them, four pages. So I started looking to see down the line and I found another one so again what are we doing in some regard it's not relevant to any habeas corpus but if they want to go and throw smoke you're going to have to have some backup information that shows this is known 
This was known before as a plan. You have to tie that together. That's a different proof. But in this case, you look through and you see on page two, a 2018 patent to, a, to someone named Cogley. And so I have two witnesses that there's in the patent, in this patent database, that there was test kits or test procedures for something called COVID-19 invented before it even came up with the, with the, the uh, World Health Organization and consistent also with the fact that those were in the world relative to the World Bank. So long discussion here just to show inside this story I found another piece of evidence. By itself it's sensational. Let's move this, remove the sensational. I found another piece of evidence. Because you bring that out, you have copies of it, and then you present that to counter anybody that wants to defame you or whatever, mischaracterize what you're doing, or call you whatever, call you a tinfoiled hat, say you're a conspiracy theorist, whatever. You, you have evidence. You don't talk out of your opinion. So I told you all these notice, all these articles can be evidence. They're notice to us if we'll just pay attention. And so this, to me, that was important. Lots of what was stated in here is important. If you look at it from a, stat, a factual statement basis, you can set up what I would tell you you need to be par careful to do. I would say do this for those of you that are considering it, what's considered anticipatory defenses against defenses, uh, so that you preload your, rem your, your petition with the things you hear the governors using to go out. They referred their orders to the CDC. They refer to the WHO. They refer to China. You're going to have to field those, and you don't get long-winded, but you do preserve and reserve the the condition that they have the prerogative to bring to say they have the burden, and they're going to say that they have all these reliances that they're taking. You have to be able to preload your petition to anticipate that as a breach to them identify the fraud, identify the existence of something that they wasn't supposed to be, identify that it wasn't normal, or it wasn't, excuse me, it wasn't a, a local. You you preload all this stuff in, and this is some kind, you can put it, sometimes it's in your mind, and you wait for a discussion, because sometimes if you get into court, the, one, the court, a judge will test you for what you know. They want to know, again, you have the rights you assert. If you walk in there babbling, because you really don't know your subject matter, the judge won't be too impressed. If you come in confident with your research and you know it's evidence, without a shadow of a doubt to you, you know exactly where it comes from and what it's doing, what it does to the to, de to destroy what the officials bringing, the feeble thing that they tried to bring, you, you then can speak with conviction, not a question. And so this is the part of dynamics in, the, in a case in your own defense. As you put up a defense against, you put up a an anticipation of the fraud, the the dis misdirection, the mischaracterization that may come, and you have basis for that too. So there's a, a little bit going on. A lot of people don't want to hear a lot of this, but this is what they've got us to be having to do. And I'll tell you something. I think we would be a better society to be able to understand this than the what we do now, because we wouldn't allow. None of us would have allowed the the idea that a an official under a limited form government could do this to anybody. And, and so I wanted to give you this ultimate uh, website because it uh, given to me because it does show lots of things. In it, I found another piece of evidence, not to use directly, but we'll be using, that'll be used if, if something comes up and they challenge the initial, an initial um, assertion, and you're looking for more evidence of, uh, to prove the point. You just keep driving home the point. And moving over now I'm in this issue, the underlying, one of the undertones of this, I talked to this moving into the year, 20 December, last last show of December, last broadcast of December, moving in, talking about the Op, op 2020, always talking forever about the military consequence we live under, Title 50, and how this military condition is always on us that underrides this whole thing. It's easy to get lost. It's also a little more difficult to see, but we do now see someone sat down and did the, the oven, uh, put together a condition uh, relative to the mission that's been invoked by Trump, President Trump. Uh, when President Trump unveiled Operation Warp Speed in May, he declared 
that it was unlike anything our country has seen since the Manhattan Project. The title of the article is New Chart Reveals Military's Vast Involved Involvement in Operation Warp Speed. Now, I'll just stop right there. It's just, we go on through the narrative. I'm not here to talk about the narrative and the stories and what I'm telling you that this is more confirmation of what is sitting underneath the veneer that we see is the cover called COVID. It brings up a whole ab- bunch of potentials and possibilities that we have to be aware of for our own safety. In particular, when we found out 9-11 that the government wouldn't protect us, and then they would go ahead and go attack somebody in a cave, and they were likely the perpetrators. Okay, so this is another, and then we see Title 50 would have allowed that if they plausibly make a statement to nobody but their own authority, self-reliant like the governors have, to say we needed to do this national security and i've told you that's the worst way to go at uh, that's the best way for them and the worst for us to deal with but i have said it can be dealt with new chart reveals military's vast involvement in operation warp speed was told to you when i pointed out oh i don't know months and months and months ago that the military was called up before operation warp speed to help do the test to help the condition and i also pointed out at that time you're deemed to be a human animal you're not a man or a woman with inheritable blood. No, you're a monster without inheritable blood. You have no property. You have no expectation to have property. They were going to manage the herd, and the military was right there to be the smiley face military to help get these tests done, which was really what? It was the ability for them to continue pressing and pushing the, the fraud of a pandemic, of a, the numbers-driven game of so-called cases. And I've told you all, go look at your rules. Cases are not a PCR test. And you got to get this. You have to understand how they did this to you. They do this in lots of ways. That's why I want you to see it. This one's so clear. Anybody who spends any time in this should be able to figure out what I've been trying to tell you over the many years of what's, how they do this to us. So unlike anything else in the country, the military has been already involved. Now we see the, the chart of how well integrated this whole thing is. And then you have to ask why. This was supposed to be a local epidemic. How is it that the federal government's driving this thing? It's supposed to be local. We heard, even if I give agreeance to the AIHR, the International Health Regulation 2005, I, I found and talked about, we found the reservation. In the reservation, the federal government, the United States government, they speak in this term, United States government, not the United States of America. These are different things. They say the United States government, must reserve back because of the federal establishment that the states have the power. If that, given that's the fact, that's the law, why is Operation Warp Speed and military's vast involvement now being able to be documented in a chart of its connections? You have to be concerned with this. So when I tell you there's still something running, running under the skin and you're going to probably need your habeas anyway, even though in Michigan it doesn't look like you need it. This is not going away, and you're going to need a whole lot more than your belief that you don't have to, you, your consent is required. No, it's not. And go read the Jacobson case. Like I've, again, over and over, I've, there's not going to be an excuse when they come to do this, or if they come to do this. It's very possible that Michigan may, may start to push the other way, but I don't know. They'll, they'll come underneath, they'll come, they have other reasons. You're going to have to stop any one of them that comes in the future in the same fashion. And so they're, this infrastructure is there. They didn't invest in all this to go no, to do nothing. And so you're going to have to have a word in your mouth and most likely a piece of paper that puts this into a question for you. Like I said, the administrative, I told you this was administrative. This is administrative conditions resolve some of this. If you put in your letter and they don't come with an answer, that's a standing review that has to be answered. I would ask you to move directly to habeas, but if you don't, you have a little bit of this. They give you a little leeway on the timing of when you do that, because you should move quickly when you find out they have no authority and they're harming you in many different ways that you have to identify. But this military is involved, and the military is involved to a great extent, has been. This story documents now the structure that's already built in to deliver something that isn't tested, has no test, 
has millions in doses already in, enforced, uh, I mean, in, in storage, that isn't even a thing, and yet it's on the move. Should not go past your purview of whether or not this might be a military attack against the people for some reason. Sounding as astonishing as that might be, and as many thumbs downs as I might get for that. There's nothing off my table relative to what's going on. And this leads into what's going on. I mean, it's how, how we start to look that if you want to protect yourself, you're going to have to have more than your opinion. The, law, the uh, Jacobson 1905 case, case says when you make your case, they don't have that power. And so this is not even on the table. And when you have statutes that give the do, require, impose the duty on officials to do certain things and they don't, and you know that, and you can identify that black and white, not your opinion. And you don't look at your harms first. You look at whether or not they acted right first. Then you find out whether or not that affected you in your in way. Now you've got your harms. And you do them, they have to do them fundamental to the constitutional issues. I say bring in your antecedent, your prior rights, and say that they're secured as well. Pursuit, life, liberty, all that stuff. That stuff no one protects themselves in, is all right here being violated. That you have to have the provision stated, like Jack Jacobson said, like I told you to do before, that you can do, that you throw Jacobson's rubber stamp authority right in the garbage. Because what's happening under the skin, you see, is already a military organization that's going to disseminate something. Likely, what? Those warehoused vaccines that are already in, in storage. The monoclonal, we heard. Now, you got to be careful, because this is what's coming in now. The monoclonal antibody technology. Before I get there, let me read this next story about the military already being around. And they get challenged, but they're still there. And this has to do, I think, with the Floyd issue. USAF reportedly opens probe into U.S. of military surveillance plane during George Floyd protests. If you have any thoughts that the military is not already involved. All part of this big deal. This COVID and then you had the protests in the streets over all the blue lives matter, black lives matter, but anybody else but you matters. The USAF, the United States Air Force, was now, oh, we're going to look into the use of our airplanes for police civil pur civilian purposes. What I find interesting is the I'll read the U.S. Under Secretary of Defense for Intelligence and Security Joseph Kernan said the country's intelligence agencies did not spy on protesters during a mass unrest sparked by the 20, 25 May death of Black American George Floyd at the hands of a white policeman in Minnesota. The New York Times on Thursday reported the U.S. United States Air Force Inspector General Lieutenant General Sammy D said. Uh, that uh, he had, she said had opened a probe into the American military using a reconnaissance aircraft during the George Floyd protests in Washington, D.C. and Minneapolis earlier in the, in the June. Following discussions with the Secretary of Defense about shared concerns, the Secretary of the, of the Air Force is conducting an investigation into the use of the Air, Air, Air National Guard RC-26 aircraft to support civil civil authorities during recent protest activities in U.S. cities. Now, there's an argument of whether or not they aren't taking any information being an airplane of anybody in particular. The point is they're using military aircraft. It's only a question, if you see here as well, that I see on this. It's only a question. They're going to do an investigation. There's an implied acceptance already in this as well. But this, had, this story was back a ways. I'm finally getting through it to throw it in here relative to seeing there's an infrastructure, military infrastructure that integrates itself with the civilian population, which we find through Title 50 and uh, I think Title 7 is uh, treating you as animals and the military start. And this whole thing with the vaccinations and things and care with the military start and, and starts with the veterinary division of the army relative to its its animals that they've just migrated over into, they've migrated into your herd, and we don't see a distinction now. So 
I want to get too lost in the fact that we uh, there's another here. There's another veneer of potential going on underneath the skin that none of this stuff of COVID even speaks to. And yet you see integration with the military on whether it's a supposed civil unrest. Remember that there we had the metro plan, the military had the metro plan on how they were going to go and work uh, the the big cities relative to any unrest. We have now the COVID, their Operation Warp Speed. On what, folks? On what? There's no test. On what? So, what is that? Is it a military attack against us? Is this a suggestion to China to create a military attack against us? And we we realize that the people in the in the government, the military of the government, knew if they go ahead and suggest to China to go ahead and do that, that China would do it, so that the, we, all the officials in America, would just fall on their face relative to their dere- their duty and be derelict. How did that happen so universally? And I don't give any quarter, if you will, to the governors that didn't lock down because they still continued the appearance that there was a COVID instead of outing the fact there is no test. And then the confusion between is it we're going to vaccine for coronavirus, the common cold? How did that just pop up and, the, and SARS-CoV-2 drop away? So we have a a bunch of shifting sand going on that we can go ahead and stand on. We can, or we can take, get off the beach, go stand back on the cliffs and look down over the, the beach and see the invasion coming. But the military has been in this in very, every d- different facet. And when it's caught, it's just a question. We'll do an investigation. And so let's move into the idea a little bit. I'm going to move on right on through, but I want to point out, I'll we'll talk to you about the military consequence, how this place is now changed. You're, that's why you have districts, states as districts, administrative districts. The CIA fact, World Factbook tells you about this. Remember they're talking in that past, that last story about the intelligence gatherings, intelligence system. Okay, it all ties together at some point if you'll give yourself the opportunity of research to see that. I don't hard and fast decide that's what's going on. But it's hard, if I read these last two stories, hard to say this military condition can't be said to not be with us. It has to be said it's going on and on and on, and it is question, and they're developing capacity building within the construct of what? In the case of Operation Warp Speed, developing vaccines and delivery for something that there's no test for. And so we have a military overview, and I've said Lieber Code will tell us, give us good insight, even though it's as old as it is. We I told you in 2010, the murder memo, it was denounced. And I said in 2012, I went to crickets. I said because nobody responded to it. I can only yell so loud and so far from behind the woodshed. But I can be I can be that a voice, and I've been continuing as best I can to continue in doing so, that I said you're going to look at the world and watch how the police work through this military connection it's a costume in front. The West Spaghetti Western police are actually military. We heard a little bit about that national security, what, how, um, the, the Department of Homeland Security and the Tennessee Troopers story. We saw that happen in 9-11. We watched how the laws then made the state subservient through that veneer. There's another veneer. All military as well. But I said, look, keep watching your stories, and at some point the cops are given complete immunity. And there is no crime uh, that they can do unless it's the most heinous crime and it sheds doubt on the system, the the commanders, the the military condition. And we hear this story come up just as a, what should I say, a pass-through. Cops cops shows up to aftermath of mass shooting, kills the hero who stopped it. No charges. Okay, can I pause? Can I stop the pause here? Do you, are you shocked yet? The gentleman who stops a mass shooting is shot. The cop that shoots him does not has no charges at all. You would think that everybody being equal, there would be at least a, what manslaughter. Okay, he didn't mean to kill him, but he died. And this is what I was telling you before: you're not going to be in a place that you're ever protected anymore. Until you start work stepping in and, and making that happen for yourselves everywhere where you're at. Early on Sunday morning, black, back in November 20, 2018, a tragedy took place in Illinois, the Illinois, after a hero security guard stopped what was quickly becoming a deadly mass shooting. 
Instead of being honored for his heroism, he would be shot by police moments later. Jamel Robertson, Roberson, 26, 26, was working security at Manny's Blue Room when his heroism got him killed. Now, two years after Roberson's trage tragedy has fallen out of the news cycle, police announced the cop who killed him will not face charges. After an extensive and thorough review of the police-involved shooting resulting in the 2018 the death of Jamal, Jamal Roberson, the Cook County State's Attorney Office has concluded that the totality of the evidence is insufficient to support criminal charges against uh, Midlothian police officer Ian Covey. The news release from the attorney's office states. Now, I'll just stop right there. I told you before the cops will be given immunity if they can plausibly deny any culpability. The attorneys are the key to that. Attorney general. Don't miss the trick on the word general being military. These are administrative districts in this capacity that the cop isn't even charged for something less than intentional crime. Now, there might be a civil remedy to the family, but my point is, is the responding officers are given the license to shoot you and are protected, is described in the Libra Code under military treatment of civilians. They say there's a, a fault, a, a, a liability that could come to the soldier, but not if it falls within the law of war, which is what determined by the commander. And so, the commander being a general, but it's maybe an attorney general, maybe even with a professional invasion, a professional union invasion, corporate invasion of your system, running the spaghetti western false front. The military, uh, Libra Code has a better answer for this than anything I know till t to date, and no one really has brought out anything else to say different. And I utilize this as a guidance and a guideline. But what I want to get to here, this is will stay like this until you step up and understand the condition and start to find something that you don't, this wrong that you don't want to see continue, that you want to, you need to make right. Let me get to the last paragraph, because it has exactly what I've been telling you is the answer. Indeed, so once again, on the second paragraph up, once again, it's continued narrative that we see of shoot first and ask questions later, says Reverend Leandre Hill. Indeed. The article goes on, the fact that a cop can show up to a bar, kill the hero, and face no consequences shows up that shooting first and asking questions later is not just some expression, it's their policy. What have I said? You have to get in, and you get in where you can, and you start at least at the policy level, and you change that policy. And then you have to work in this country now, and you have to work harder to stop this ability that they have that you at least put in, that an officer will be put before the peers of his community, even so, even though it may sound like a blue li every, the blue, li blue line lives matter better, even so, they don't get off scot-free by the general, the general's statement, the bar member's statement, that he's, everybody suffers the consequence of their actions like everybody would. And so you would put this out in the policy that that's not a go when that happens. If you don't, you're going to see Libra code working out over and over and over. And I say it that way because, again, I don't have any other better reference. They want to call it immunity. They want to call it qualified immunity. Again, that's the bar allowing that's an invention. But that's, in fact, the, the, the fact. That's, in fact, what's going on. And if we don't want to suffer this one day, then we won't suffer long, will we? Be over in a few seconds, I, I suppose. But if we don't want to have to face that, if we want to force, again, force peace into the world instead of this violence that we've allowed, we are going to have to stop it. And there's, again, mechanisms. I talk about this all the time, the mechanisms that we have to do that. So... This guy gets assassinated. He's a hero gets assassinated. Uh, this guy stops a mass shooting. There's no sense in the cops to question. No, they're going to get home. They see a gun. They can shoot you and walk away and, and scot-free. That's, that's a military condition. That's not peace and justice. And you feel the injustice, but no one understands 
that's the reality and justice is reality and you're going to have you will have to step up to stop that if you don't want to happen have it happen around you and so this idea of instant executional thing is assassination is going on i find it interesting the real recent news about coming out too when i anticipate a military consequence a military control uh, right and underneath the skin of it all, right in your face, but under costume, you can't really tell it. You don't recognize it when they're coming to help COVID. They're actually treating you like veterinary care, the animals that you is and the herd that you are. None of you cut yourself out from the herd and say that can't happen and that's not supposed to be happening. Why? It's not even about them. It's because there was no infectious agent determined like the law. The black and white said there had to be, and we know that. Because there is no test. And that's not because you say it. That's because you bring out the evidence that the influencers, the undue influencers called the CDC and the WHO, not the Rock Group or the OWL, the World Health Organization, admit that there's no test. And so this is you putting together the news you see into facts that are backed up objectively and then put them in a factual statement of a condition, a plausible condition, and then claim that that cause or, this, or the influence of that cause has interfered with your fundamental rights, is a complaint, is a defense, is an argument, if you will, if it may to be an argument, placed to challenge the official authority that has you locked down in quarantine. Or what? Or even phase two, or phase three. You get to do a little bit. There is nothing that I can find that can interfere with your liberty. And that's even underneath the civil constitution liberty. Nothing. I say that, I'm waiting. Do you say, there's? well, there is one exception. And if you said that, thank you very much. Because if you said that, then we're looking at right at that same statute. Because that statute that they didn't do also says when you do, do the due process, find the infectious agent and find someone who can infect the rest, then you have the power to put the sick one or the potentially sick one or the best we can acknowledge is the sick one, the contagion, in a place for a while. The one. The sick one. Not all y'all. And so anyway, so we have this military thing. It caused me to think. I wasn't really into this Trump going down with the positive COVID. So I looked at that and said, that there's no test. What's this, what's this scam? But that caused a whole lot of thoughts in my mind. And I don't know if I want to go through a ton of them. Certainly a lot of them may seem, well, there are, there, there's no knowledge of it. So it's all speculative. But there's, it's speculative in my mind because what am I to have been doing behind the woodshed the whole time but trying to anticipate the future that you're not surprised by it, that you're prepared. If you think of ten things could happen and only one, then you were prepared for the one. Yeah, the nine may not have, may have been you, an overachiever, but you were prepared nonetheless. And this is what I suggest that you do when you walk in your court thing. You become an overachiever on your case, on your evidence, on why you got your stuff together, and you be ready 365, all sphere around of any attack and any any kind of a, an, an aggression against what your position is in protecting yourself. You walk in with that much preparation. If you never needed any of it, you were still better than walking in thinking you were going to win, and then they attack you. If you only needed one thing you were prepared in, and you had a thousand things you were ready to gr address, you're still better prepared, aren't you? And this is the thing about what I say, kind of like be the porcupine, walk in with your case confident. You, the, the, the biggest beast in the world may take you out, but these guys aren't the beast. These guys are the minions that have black and white, black letter law, if you will, that have to follow it, that failed, that they're easy to pick out. They're not the kinds that may run this little thing through here that we're seeing coming out with Trump. You know, we, this first story came before. Remember, I, I didn't really pay attention to it, but I remembered it. I picked it back up. Assassination of the president, who wants Trump dead, had to do with a week or two. September 19th, they're saying here, because American media reported that a week ago, a week before that, special services discovered a toxic substance, ricin, in a letter to the United States President Donald, Donald Trump. Ricin could be made in, in artisanal conditions from castor bean oil cake, which uh, from which castor oil is squeezed out. If it enters the body, the poison irreversibly destroys tissues, cells, 
the circulatory system, and the person dies within 36 to 72 hours in terrible agony with bleeding in the stomach and intestines or from the damage of lungs and respiratory tract. Ricin can be used as a biological weapon of mass destruction. Okay, what did I say about 9-11 being repeated again, or would we watch it? I don't know where this comes from, but that was the story. Someone wants to feign even. They thought they could get directly to him uh, with that. I don't know, but they want to make, they made the news that, that uh, someone wanted Trump dead. So that popped up after this. That remind, I was reminded of that. Remember the military consequence, possibility, probability. I don't know what we're doing. I re recognize the pharma. That's P with a capital H, Harma. What they're doing, what you heard Azar talk about, monoclonal, polyclonal antibody technology, never been done before, never been, uh, for the common cold no less, right, is on the horizon that, that there's a big, big amount of money here, profit-driven uh, potential here, its own army doing its own con attack. All these things are sitting there as a possibility, and what am I responding to? Nothing more than what I told you. There's a haystack of noise that we're going to be faced with coming in. I was talking about the beginning of the year, and I said, be careful of the needle. The needle in that haystack, the actual thing that's in motion, the object of the of the thing that's been planned. And so this starts to remind me, we're thinking about this all year. What is going on through all this? And I don't understand why all y'all don't respond to it to knock it down, but that's near, neither here nor there, because something's still, still on the horizon. We see enough documents to see the plan is in play. We see the next target for something imperative is 2025 on the goal, the agenda to 2030, underneath what? The, the, the 2050 goal plan, so 2100. It's all written down what they think they want to get away with it. Are you going to step up? But this is very interesting, right before an election. And I understand, I'd not one way or the other on any of this politics. I have no thought about it. These are all problems. These are we allow them to be problems, and they are problems, and to me, I'd rather not have to deal with it, but this, these types of things have the ability to do, like I told you, COVID. It's not going to affect you. What's going to affect you is all the lunatics around it. The ramific, the, the dominoes that start falling around it, that's what affects you. Trump aide Hope Hicks test positive for COVID-19 after traveling with President was the first salvo in a now a bunch of stories relative to COVID-19 and being infected, testing positive, actually testing positive is what they said, not infected. Hope Hicks, a close aide to President Trump, had tested positive for the coronavirus after traveling on Air Force One to the President's Debate Tuesday, a Minnesota rally on Wednesday. I find Minnesota coming up all the time anymore. At any rate, doesn't matter. Her infection, her infection, they say, comes after she was uh, seen maskless in a close contact with the White House and Trump campaign staff Tuesday, including White House senior advisor Stephen Miller and a campaign advisor Jason Miller, uh, the outlet reported. It won't stop anymore. This is the first salvo out that someone in the Trump uh, administration had uh, tested positive for COVID. So, so class, what's the problem with all this to start with? Tested positive. How'd they do the test? I've been saying there's no test. Well, they did a test. What's the test? It's not a test. It's show. And you can believe it if you want it. If you want to buy into this, it's fine. So they tested positive for COVID. How did they do that? Through PCR. And so we already see there's a problem. Now, who's origin originating this? Is this the political left, the political right, well, who? This is a, a fault. This is an enemy. That's always sitting out there. I still believe, I, I think maybe the Chinese were handed something from the United States and they said, this is going to be fun. We'll, we're in. Or they came up with their own and they just executed and everyone in America failed. Every official failed. What I've been railing against everybody here to go hit because that's, for the most part, would have stopped this entire thing. Eight questions about the President Trump testing positive came right after he tested positive, and Melania tested positive, and some other senator tested positive, and this started to look a little bit odd. And I don't know what I really want to say m about this. There's a lot of politics that could be going on here. There's a lot of unreality and reality going on. 
And so testing positive, the president test positive. How was he infected was the, uh, was the question. How was Hope Hicks' role? What was Hope Hip Hicks' role? And what we need to know was an article I found. And those, all those questions are irrelevant to my mind. I want to know how they tested for COVID and how they found COVID was started by some causative agent that they were required because I don't know of anything that's factually evidentiary in that capacity. None. But this, I don't know how this story even develops that we allow it to get here that this article even speaks to what we need to know. Don't we need to know what the infectious agent is and how they found it? Well, I think so. I would hope you think so. But we don't see that in this article. They do go through all kinds of questions, which I thought was fascinating. And I, I don't know if I really want to go through them. But if you look through them, you actually look at the question and you can see them do the setup. Let me, maybe I will touch one. Because they keep, they said masks. They mentioned masks because it's all about not wearing masks. And yet the administration says, well, they had protocols and they did wear masks. Well, that just proves that those masks are not effective, doesn't it? They're so Whatever social distancing they said wasn't effective. We have a little clue there, like I've been telling you to point out. Look at the news for the notice. But here we have, how could this have happened, with a question mark they ask, given the president's cavalier attitude toward masks, a posture adopted by his staff and family, it was probably inevitable this would happen. Probably inevitable. Pretty interesting. Despite the aggressive testing of anyone who meets with the commander-in-chief, if you don't think this is a military perception, no regimen is perfect. Pope Hicks, on a, a top aide to the president, reportedly, test, reportedly tested positive on Wednesday, to put, uh, but felt symptoms that night and was tested on Thursday and proved positive. Why then did the president travel on Thursday when he surely would have known about Hicks being positive and recognized that he might be too? We don't know if Hicks is infected. Hicks infected Trump. We do know there was a reason for the president to cancel his travel on Thursday, including a fundraiser in New Jersey, where he seemed sluggish. Did Trump spread COVID? We should know and find out the status of those he met with on Thursday. Anonymize the data, but let us know if COVID was spread. One can't totally rule out espionage as the source of Hicks and Trump's COVID, although it's far-fetched. We know Vladimir Putin's government has worked hard to keep Trump in office, but it's not impossible for a foreign government, say Iran or China, to find a way to infect a Trump aid. So, this is where I want to bring it back. They relate to the commander-in-chief. They relate to this in a military condition, a national security type of condition, and you can't disregard the suggestion at all. And so this got my mind thinking about all this relative to what's the facts on the ground, what's the point, and I can't move from, I, just, I can think outside of it, and I certainly have, have done so. But to keep the discussion here narrow, there is no test starts to indicate a certain number of potentials isolated in those potentials. Not just espionage, but we also understand this guy Trump has been underneath pressure from the political parties in ways I have never seen in my life. And through incessant type of tax. There's one faction. We've heard the military sits there they may not like something. We don't know of an internalized coup. We heard a little bit about that going through the Obama, where Obama got rid of a lot of the, the generals. We don't know the dynamic. We don't know. I guess this is the other problem for me here when I talk about this. It's certainly just speculation. What am I after? I'm after working through I, things in order to look to see when it comes down that something happens, and it's going to come local, I want to be prepared in my mind to be able to respond and in the right direction, the proper way. Uh, and I hope, I'm pausing, I hope you consider this. You don't just disregard the kind of dynamic that's being played on us. 
and the global scope that happened just the last few months here, the last this year, to show how fast things can change and how insane things can get and how from nowhere people get power to do to, to kill people. We already saw the cops are completely immune. You don't think these other people under the color of helping everybody aren't going to be as immune? And then you have the world stage where there's real governments wanting to take down other, other governments. So we have a whole lot to really kind of look at, although I don't want to get us into a fear mode. I want to really more do the analysis. What are we looking at to anticipate? Commander-in-chief, coup, they bring up Putin and, and, and Iran. Get, just forget those. China, maybe. Get rid of those, though, but because we're looking at something happening in the office and those that are around Trump. It was reported that uh, fatigued Trump infused with polyclonal antibodies to fight COVID. This was astonishing. There, this is all experimental stuff. These these two chemistries have not been tested fully and not had tested together that they handed them supposedly gave to Trump. What I find interesting is that they describe this one, uh, this therapy, as polyclonal. Because remember, uh, Secretary Azar was saying the reserves are in monoclonal. And I did a little bit of research, and we can look at that in a moment just quickly. Monoclonal is a very specific target. Polyclonal is like a net. The main point I want to point out here is not, it's, it's that it's all synthetic. And it's utilizing animals in order to create the synth synthesize through an immune response, the things that they call B cells here. And this is another problem. But let me read here the polyclonal. President Trump on Friday was administered polyclonal antibodies to help his body battle COVID-19 and is exper experiencing fatigue, his doctor said in a statement. Now, okay, following PCR confirmation of the president's diagnosis on precautionary measures, he received a single 8-gram dose of Regeneron's polyclonal antibody cocktail. Now, this becomes problematic because it was that they were talking about monoclonal. And I found another source that talks about monoclonal being in this. So I don't know what this news is. What I want to point out here is, is Trump playing us or is he being played? Is the ricin indicating that he's been moved under the cover of COVID and Walter Reed in order to protect further an attack that's going on that we're not being told? Because at this level, you're into areas you'll never hear what was going on and what has gone on. And that's all at a very high level national security positioning. We'll never know what they're doing if there's an attack. And if we listen to China and they offered a suggestion that we know that they went after an economic and social attack, societal attack, that there may be a silent war, a different type of silent war going on, the new 22nd century style silent war, as a possibility of probability. However, is, he a, is, is President Trump a being a fool? Or is he playing people, playing us? He certainly must know there is no test. And if he doesn't, then he's being played for the fool. I'll tell you behind the woodshed, between him and I, one of us knows there's a, there is no test. If he knows there is no test, and he's promoting that he's under poly, uh, underneath the positive test, and his wife is as well, the, the first lady, is this a cover on a military protection thing, or... Is he actually a promoter for the pharmaceutical, lowercase p, capital H, pharma, pharmaceutical company that they bring out and they promote two untested drugs and they say he's taking them, he's experiencing fatigue. I would say that's his response to this stuff. It doesn't matter. They confuse polyclonal with monoclonal. The monoclonal they apparently have in warehouses all millions of doses ready to go. They asked for special permission, and the companies gave it to them. Oh, it would be our service to the president. We can't deny that. 
And I looked at this and I said, if that, if the president doesn't understand that there's no test, then he's being played the fool, and they have got him into taking this stuff. That would be set up by a regime inside the government that wants to take him out, politically hobble him, cause trouble politically, the same type of factions he's been against that's been against him all this time he's been in office. Otherwise, he knows there is no test. That positive PCR is a cover. It means nothing. It's meaningless. And then he's using this, essentially, to promote pharmaceuticals. Because when he comes out, and he's great and fine, instead of using any other treatment, like let maybe let's say, what, echinacea for a cold? Because we know there is no test, and we haven't found an actual thing that's worse than the flu at the worst, or the a nasty common cold on the other hand. So he knows what he's got. He knows the test is no good. And then he promotes this cocktail that's not been given to anybody. Bothers me. And when I saw, I didn't understand this until I saw him at supposedly, I guess it was Walter Reed, saying he's on the job. It's going to be tough, but he's going to champion through it. And this miracle drugs are coming. That sounded like the art of the deal. That sounded like to me to be a salesman. And so opposite all this assassination idea that this is a move, something, something's coming in to try and attack, uh, to assassinate Trump, internally on top of that, not externally, but internally, however it was planted. We see these guys work together. The military of the China, remember, we found them in the news. They were working with, with Canada. I hear there's movements all over the country going, you know, blocking part of the Canada and blocking part of the South again. What is all this? It's just, it's just, they do this, they do these maneuvers, but is this all related? Is there an actual little silent attack going on? But, but the United States works with all these military people in bioweapons labs. It's a, we, saw, we heard it through the WHO. It's a, an international condition. Now, is there a more definite attack going on? Or have we also found out that Trump has not called the fraud of COVID, has not called the fraud of the, that there is no test, not because our opinion, but because the official's documentation proves it. And there is no determination across the nation or the world relative to the causative factor for whatever these symptoms are. And last night, Trump, in a video, little video clip, comes out and says he's taking these drugs for whatever they call it, this thing. He didn't even have a, he didn't even want to call it COVID-19. And I sent a tweet out on that. I said, that's right. You're right. Whatever you call it, there is no test. And so let's get beyond the fraud. But what are they doing? Is he a salesman? Is he fooling everybody? Is he trying to sell now this Operation Warp Speed miracle drugs that, that he's now been brought down as a plan? I don't know. So, but what's the answer to it all? Whatever my opinion is would be you're going to have to know your local authorities had a power, and that local authority is the exclusive power for health considerations, and you're going to have to address that if they come with their miracles to help you. Let's look quickly at the polyclonal antibody, the, why you may, may want to reconsider any of this. The article is about, this article, and Wiki, just go into Wiki, is a, I'm not a medical guy. Don't know. I just try to pick up this stuff as I can. This is a fast-moving, highly technical type field, or they've made it technical, or it's just a bunch of puff and smoke anyway. But uh, here we go. The article is about a production of antibodies in vivo for its medical and biological applications. See anti-serum. Polyclonal antibodies, PABS, are antibodies that are secreted by different B cell lineages within the body, whereas monoclonal antibodies come from a single cell lineage. They are a collection of immunoglobulin molecules that reacts against a specific antigen, each identifying a different epitope. Production. The general procedure to produce polyclonal antibodies is as follows. One, antigen preparation. Two, adjuvant selection and preparation, three, animal selection, four, injection process, and five, blood serum extraction. An antigen adjuvant 
conjugate is injected into an animal of choice to initiate an amplified immune response. After a series of injections over a specific length of time, the animal is expected to have created antibodies. Is ex Can I read that again? The animal is expected to have created antibodies against the conjugate. Blood is then extracted from the animal and then purified to obtain the antibody of interest. I'll stop there. They go on and talk about the types of animals. And they remember, you're considered an animal, a human animal. Don't ever let that sit, slip from your mind as we start under, trying to understand what they're doing. But they have to go to uh, the animals. They try to pull out, but they're getting the B cells. Remember, the actual test of the body's immune is from where? As I picked up and reported from India, the Indian Times, of what they do there, and they look at what? They don't look at B cells. They're not looking at antigens that way. They're looking at the T cells. And that is the body's perfection to the point that the body sees the problem. This technology is short term. This technology is using foreign DNA. This technology works to create antigens. What does the antigen then do? You get this therapy, and you take a PCR test, and what does the PCR test see? Well, if it's tailored to a particular antigen, it may not see it at all. But if it's tailored to the antigen, they can prove that the therapy so-called works because they've now PCR positive that the therapy is now giving you the antibodies you need and now you are immune, when in fact that's a lie as well. Donald Trump with experimental monoclonal, monoclonal antibody cocktail was a story I found, because I got confused on that polyclonal. Polyclonal is a net of lots of different anti antigens. Monoclonal is they find the specific antigen, and they target that. What I found interesting for myself, and I didn't talk about it last week, was when I looked up monoclonal, clonal, it was connected consistently with cancer. This brought up the fact of, inject, of the uh, vaccines being uh, utilizing what, monkey pox and cancers and things like that. And what we're looking at is a therapy against that condition that they inject you with. And then they claim success. It's similar to what they were talking about, HIV, AIDS as well. And don't forget, all this technology is coming from the HIV, AIDS fraud as well, on top of it all. Donald Trump treated with the experimental monoclonal antibody cocktail was a converse story that I found from Pharma Industry Review, which I tend to believe they're going to explain this a little bit better, not necessarily the news. But so what is this guy getting? I don't know. But President Donald Trump has been administered with intravenous dose of Regeneron Pharmaceuticals Experimental COVID-19 Treatment, Regen, Reg, Reg and cov 2 a combination of two monoclonal antibodies. Let's stop there. So monoclonal is specific. My question, there is no test. What are they showing? How are they creating this? What animal did they choose to create this for you all? in order to give it to you. I found a story a while back. Are these genetically engineered cows the future of medicine? You might actually remember this story. Just bringing it back, the, the, just to show you that this has been long-term technology they've been working on. It's a big business to pump. And the art of the deal is if they can out-deal you, negotiate you out of what you think you have as your own consent and protection, then it's quite fine for them to pump into you whatever they want to. Uh, they look like normal black and white Holstein cows, a common sight in western Iowa, but these cows are special. Used not for their milk or meat, but for their blood. They're plasma donors, and one day the, li the life they save may be your own. The cows are genetically engineered by biotech company CASAB Biotherapeutics to produce human antibodies, proteins uh, that fight pathogens, and these antibodies could one day treat infectious diseases like Ebola, influenza, and Zika, and their potential to address global outbreaks was recognized this summer by the World Health Organization. Let me stop there.
Influenza, that's not novel. They didn't say coronavirus. And coronavirus is not novel. They didn't mention SARS-CoV-2 here. So, we don't know, but they're using, at least one, one company is using cows. And this is the how they create what they're talking about. I don't know about you, but I'm not so sure that I'm liking this type of thing directly injected in people. This has all the problems of the injections and the DNA problem and the RNA problems, because remember, the antigen is an RNA a hybrid response in the PCR. And so getting back to what is Trump doing, is he unknowing that there's no test? And has someone duped him to take this stuff? Which is not a guy I want to be start listening to so well. Or does he know there is no test? And this has all been a facade. Let's get back to the masks. We had a big issue about the masks. But we know, if you go read the side of the package, it says don't use it for a virus. If you go read the data sheet, it says 3M says don't you don't use this to protect yourself from a virus. So the on that and it says it, you could die if you misuse it. It's not for the general public in general circumstances. It says it right in the N95 3M paperwork. I read it to you. So this masquerade is another diversion. But this whole condition is a diversion. My question to you is the diversion for what? And I think the answer needs to be put, because we don't know, in a potential categories. And we need to keep our eye out, not eye out, but we need to keep our eye on the potential of it. And at least understand that at some point it comes to us locally. Why well, I've been advocating that you step up and you understand what a habeas corpus does. You understand what a challenge, administrative challenge is, because we know that this is all coming through administration, law, administrative law, if you will, administrative execution from the executive that you can do things in the administrative law that are actually more delineated if you go to the Administrative Procedures Act for your due process that I haven't even talked about. If I can't get anybody to step up on a habeas, which is the simplest, I don't even know what to say about the rest. But there's something going on that I can't put my finger directly on that has three or four real good possibilities none of which we want to tangle with by trying to just deny or in a way or not or fight it in the wrong way. And I don't put anybody, there's an there's adversaries out there and nobody is not an adversary today to me in my mind. Not that I'm paranoid and not that all y'all are not in there, but those that can make the decisions to cause harm to me or someone I know or someone that six degrees away I know is what I think about, and the things that may cause me to think about what do people do. And I've been coming behind the woodshed for a decade, over a decade, to explain this condition, how to prepare your mind for things that were coming, things that they told us were coming that I described to you, that are in part still developed to come out, but that are here in part nonetheless. That we are going to have to be more prepared as there's something, whether it's the military consequence, global, whether it's a country, countries fighting each other in this new 22nd century method, utilizing the biodiversity convention of biowarfare legalized, chemical warfare legalized. Remember, viruses are not actually biological. Remember, the PCR is a research technique it's not even not even a test and it, it's like unlike a polyclonal it's monoclonal in the sense that if you have a known isolate it will amplify that and the researchers researcher knows that the amplification is that particular thing when that technique is applied to the garbage can called your immune system the fine thing that it is, it's only going to replicate what it finds your body's destroying. And it's not going to identify anything in particular, just that your body's there doing it. That the techniques that they've developed in order to put you in a cloud are e easily, Vince, easily determined, and you can be used to stop what is assumed by the official to be best science. It's BS. And you have the power 
to expose that. And it's coming to the point where we don't know who is the salesman on this, that you're going to have to be able to see the deception and distance distance yourself from it and then be able to respond to it, even if it's an administrative uh, pause. Now, I've talked to you about how that works. You know, I keep talking about my, my mind keeps saying, you got to explain this every day all the time because no one really listens to you enough. Some of you do, but you know, some people that come in and out 15 seconds, 15 minutes, whatever the heck, you're not getting any of this. In fact, last, I'm, I'm going to go off a little bit point here. I, I named last, I titled the last week's broadcast Land of the Law of the Land. I thought people would be interested in that. You know, it's another one of those, those things you should listen to that no one did. How do people know not to go to that when I'm talking about the foundation of how you exist in the United States of America? Where you come from is that last week's broadcast. And we found out about the uh, the Native American uh, treaties and the agreements and all that is an understanding that you need to have. And hardly anybody really listens. Less than normally doesn't listen. It's an astonishing thing I've witnessed over uh, the same decade I've been trying to explain to people what they need to do to protect themselves. To be able to find and look into these things that are anomalous, hypocrisies, whatever you want to name on them, making no sense, oxymoron, and making sense of them in the way that you're going to need to be able to protect yourself. We, we have a technology that the President of the United States was either duped into taking because he doesn't really understand there is no test. In other words, he's not that genius that he was telling us that I would like that everybody would be anyway. It's not against him at all. This is just the reality. They got his wife to believe there is no test, but that there's not, they didn't tell him that there's no test. So they got him to take a test. And someone's running this scam against his condition, or he's part and parcel to it. And this is still going to roll downhill because whether this is an, an assassination attempt thing and they take out the president, whatever happens on the political side, or he's in on it, pharma wins. Either way, pharma wins because they're going to then show it killed the president and you need this miracle drug he just promoted or it cured the president and you need this, this miracle drug. And you need to be able to step back and say for yourself, because you're looking around and finding 90% of society's nuts. Not just that you won't, not just that you don't consent, but how it is the ones that are coming with their miracles have no authority to have the miracles. And you're going to do that locally. And you're going to do that by understanding how the place, the United States of America, was wired in its federalism issue how the states still have certain authorities and you can rely on that and then that imposed a duty upon the officials because of that power that they failed to do that they now don't have a mitigation measure they can bring to you because up to 90% of those who tested COVID positive (laughs) wrongly diagnosed another as we move on another truth going on, more people finding out this this stuff that I've been talking about, who was clearly going to be what it was early on for me when I did, I, did, I think it was about a three-hour dive into what the PCR was, and then reading the official documentation, clear to me. This document is important for those of you that want to understand this PCR problem. It's a three-parter. I only have one part. I didn't go to the other pre- previous ones to know whether or not this is a valid in, those, in, its, in, it, in that, and those are other articles and parts, but this part explains the PCR, explains the condition, explains the problem, discusses Crary Mullis's process, the inventor, who's now dead. I really wish he was around to explain further, but we have enough from him, who tells us this was a research technique, not a diagnostic tool. This article, for those of you that didn't take couple hours, is succinct enough in part three, if you read through it, they explain what PCR is, they explain what the problems are with it, they explain how their problems can be created, they explain the fact that there's no 
standard to the amplification cycles. Uh, you may or I can't remember if it's in this one. The, the, the CDC already knows when you go up above about 25, 23 or 25 cycles, they they didn't find a virus then, and they're not able to find it after. To show you that down after, when they're anything above 25 cycles, they're not looking at anything more than the garbage can. As this thing multiplies any DNA bit, it's a hybrid bit, RNA DNA bit, trillions of times the way this thing works that this article is more to the point for your edification if you go to the broadcaster when I post it and read it if you don't understand about PCR and you need you really need to find out about it because this is how they started this whole thing with Trump the PCR positive the PCR positive Hicks the PCR positive Senator whomever the PCR positive this is how they're coming and this is the response. I told you we got a letter that the, the, the response from the local county was PCR. You have to address it. You have to have an understanding. And if you don't have the time to go figure out maybe the video sequence of understanding the technology, this article will tell you what I've told you in the past, maybe more succinctly, maybe more together, so that you have an evidence of the subject matter you're talking with regarding a fraud. And how to listen for when someone presents this to explain how it is the fraud. What's the importance of that? If you get into an administrative review or an equity court, in particular an equity court, they come with fraud that's not clean hands. They lose the case right there. Again, I told you this is not a fight. This is understanding where the crime is, how the crime is, and how to expose that what's coming as a defense is another crime. And all of that is in your favor because the burden is on them to show how they're not the criminals. Firstly, how they were vigilant to keep their oath of office and do the law. And then secondly, how they didn't use crime fraud to cover up that they didn't. And so now we... Okay, so this dynamic, the media, you can't trust it. I try to show you how to look through it, extract what you need. You make, you go prove out certain things so that they're factual, not opinion. And then we see right now in this time, at the same time the courts are now coming back with people finally coming up with certain cases. I've asked you all to do it on your own so that well, this would happen quicker. But more to the point of what we needed, not the way they're fabricating the cases. The corporate media flips its script, vaccine risk is real, science isn't settled. Suddenly, corporate Amer media is telling Americans we should be more diligent about vaccine safety. At face value, this sudden rapid coordinated narrative switched throughout the corporate media and echoed by several medical mouthpieces and government officials is baffling. Outlets like Stat News, CNN, Wired, and others for years have gleefully hurled anti-vaxxer slur at anyone who questioned vaccine safety. But now, their grandstanding is beacons of scientific methods and steadfast guards to vaccine safety science. Hooray? It is disgusting. So, but I want this to show you, this article, that the government agent called the media is flipping the narrative to keep you destabilized. And yet, in what they start to assert, you can use that that's, if you will, common sense rationale for how this whole thing was supposed to work at all. And so we have this shift you can use as well how, well, as it was just recently used, when it goes to the mainstream media, you use it as now common knowledge, general knowledge, actually. The general knowledge that even the officials should know. To do what? Remove what they would otherwise rely on as good faith reliance that they're doing it correctly when they weren't told. So even in the about face, we are not subject to any of that. We can use it as evidence. It's how you use it. 
it's that you use it in the proper way. And I say proper because you can, again, we don't want to blow it out more than what it is. You're not promoting the mainstream media. What you're doing is showing really that it's now general knowledge of what they now say. You then support what they show now, notwithstanding what they did before, is actually the proper way, the proper supportable view. What you're doing there is you're stripping anybody in the public sector of any reliance that they can continue with the lie as another layer of what you're talking about, of what is wrong, how you're going to stop it. Run with the fact the media is doing now promoting vaccine safety. Why? Because you just heard they're willing to use the president, if we go down the one track, to promote questionable, untested, uncertified emergency uses of toxic chemicals to claim that they're good for you and a miracle. That's what kind of got me. I could not believe that that was coming out of his mouth, uh, Trump's mouth. And so where it looks like you can go, partly because they telegraphed the PCR positive, is to understand PCR, understand it better, understand that they're creating by PCR positive a bunch of so-called clonal things, GMOs, synthetics, that you hide underneath the genomic manipulations, DNA editing through CRISPR, no less. The remember that still sits. That's what they do. The cows, the cows with CRISPR. We don't know the unintended consequences. I don't know how much I've talked about this, not incessantly, but enough. If you've been listening, that this test becomes critical to showing an understanding, so they can't use it in order to give themselves a footing. Like the test on its own could be anything. Now that the media is coming out with safety, you then embrace that part as being proper rationale. It then highlights the emergency, insane action that's gone on without that check. And you bring another level to your defense in your for your defense. And I got to bring up here again relative to the PCR and understanding it and its failures, and that the officials know it's a failure. Again, this was a critical, critical story out of the New York Times. Faith in quick tests leads to epidemic that wasn't. They are relying on the PCR solely. That There is no provision for that in the local law. You just need to find it. I wish you all would just go find it. It's one statute, one section. It's not that long. That these, there's states in particular. Oh, as I as I think about this this report, Tennessee, where this new article, this new case should be being filed and uh, served here in the next week or so, is one of the states that they know the PCR is not the test they can rely on, and it's in this story that the PCR, it's known, will throw a. It doesn't say anything. It can be used to scare everybody. It scared doctors is the most important thing. You think maybe in good faith the doctors are also fools? They don't even know their own technology, that they tell Trump something to get him to believe something that he still doesn't know either? Remember early on, the, the doctors, good doctors, terrified over this COVID thing until after a few months and they started to really come out of the problem. And they started to think about it, and it stopped making sense. Could this be what's going on? Is this the coup that's going on relative to profits to pharma and the acceptance that miracles are in your future by them? Where we can, we better, I guess I'm sure you better understand this, at least for now, the, the, the reliance on PCR, how it fails, how it's failed in the past and how your local officials know or should know about that when you get this link or go find it. I explained, I've already read this story a bit, I've already put this out, in fact it was used to show the local officials know what they call pseudo-epidemics, right? You have to know about how that is created against you because that's what COVID-19 is. That's why I have a very direct angle, there's one of two choices here, Trump 
is a, has been duped in his own ignorance. And reliance like you all might do on medical doctors. I'm not speaking to the choir here. I know what your answer is going to be. Or he's part of, the other answer is he's part of the promotion. Neither of which is an answer for you. Is what I hope you come away with with this. But it's not that easy. You have to, as I say, have a word in your mouth for your defense and hopefully your loved ones and those around you and hopefully within six degrees of separation from you all as a nation, a society stands back up, if I said last night, by sitting down, write your letter, your demand, and get identify the demand for evidence that they have to present. And if they don't want to listen, great. You've perfected your right to go in and challenge the authority that they're destroying your life or the life around you harming and hurting others for lack of being able to get at the care they need, making homelessness, causing suicides, whatever is your the thing that really gets in your craw, the crawdad that you is. But where is it going if you don't understand the limitation? The WHO warns coronavirus vaccine alone won't end pandemic. We cannot go back to the way things were. Who are these criminals to determine your life when you were given liberty under the Constitution? Non-governmental organization. Foreigner who has influence through the CDC. Why are you allowing this? The World Health Organization said Friday, this is an older story, just repeating, you can remind to you that the vaccine will be a vital tool to the global fight against coronavirus but it won't end the COVID pandemic on its own, and there's no guarantee scientists will find one, well, despite the miracle cures. Fight against coronavirus is not the fight against SARS-CoV-2, is it? They're telling you right up front in this story in their statements. The same WHO director says COVID-19 is to actually advance climate change, which we know advances sustainable development. This is not opinion. This is not conspiracy theory. This is out of their mouth. And thank you to an emailer. Again, we talked about the game being played. What's the gameplay going on? I didn't know, but was sent to me. And thank you again. Right after last week's broadcast, COVID-19 vaccination program interim playbook for jurisdiction operations. If you don't think that jur- word jurisdiction is important, an interim playbook. I said, we're being played. Who's being played for the fool? Trump? Or is Trump playing us for the fool? And we have no response. The vaccine program is in a play, is have a playbook already. No different than the military. It's already got the d- dispensary going to happen. If you don't think this maneuver is well laid out, planned, and up against you, please reconsider that it is to the point you're going to have to have a better response for yourself. And it's going to be in attacking the very heart of the authorities and getting back to not giving lip service to the established government, but going ahead and using it to protect yourself because these people have usurped it. And they've gone through shady ways of doing it, which I won't get into. I don't have the time to get into it in doing so. But the everything that they tell us is in their documentation. Talked about being game played by Azar and all the monoclonal and millions of doses being for, being pl- being put in warehouses. And here we have the interim playbook for jurisdictions operation regarding a vaccination program. Do you, do you think this is just happening now? Or does 57 pages of report come from somewhere that there will have someone had a plan? A plan against you and your and yours. Thank you, Grimm, for what you do at reallibertymedia.com and the website, Blogcaster Space, and the archives for all y'all. And then uh, ucy.tv and the ghost in the machine that we is over there periodic- to uh, to also give us the U- the YouTube. Thank you, Jules, for what you do there. Again, normalization of ignorance. Thank you for the mirror. Sound minds for what you do there. Uh, big deal over every week showing some of this stuff and all the chatters there. The minds and bit shoot. Thank you. I'll be with you next week. Tech diffs or nature willing. Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, journey with purpose.
that's what opening up a can of whoop-ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop-ass. 